Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK, and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one, and by popular request, I'll be making these very easy to do English muffins, or as we call them in England, muffins. And also, this is a no need method, which makes it even easier. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start by weighing off the egg and milk. You can of course use the measurements I've given in the recipe, but as eggs will be slightly different in size, doing it this way you'll get the liquid measurements exact. And for those interested, this recipe is a 70% hydration, which means 245 grams or mils for this recipe. Next, add the sugar and yeast and give it a good mix. OK, once it's mixed, set it aside for at least 10 minutes to make sure that your yeast is alive and well. Once you know that your yeast is active and forming up, start the recipe. In a large bowl, add the flour and mix in the salt. And now make a well in the centre of the flour. Once that's done, add your active yeast mixture. Next, add your softened butter. You can use any of the cooking oils if you prefer. And start bringing all those ingredients together. And as this is a relatively small amount of dough, I'm using my bowl scraper, as opposed to using my usual wooden spoon handle. You can use a stand mixer to do this initial mix, but it only takes 90 seconds to do by hand, so it's hardly worth pulling your machine out for. Remember, this is a no-need method. The no-need way does take a little longer than the kneading method, but I firmly believe this method is better for taste and texture of the finished bread. Once you dose together, cover the bowl. Now I use a shower cap to do this, which are available in two colours in the website shop if you want one. Now, get it into a warm, draft-free spot. I like to use the oven with just the light bulb on and set your timer for 45 minutes. Once the time is up, your dough should have at least doubled in size. Now scrape out the dough onto a floured surface. Before going any further, spread a teaspoon of oil all around the sides of the empty bowl. And this is just so the dough will release easier from the bowl after the second rise. OK, sprinkle a little flour on it and start to degas the dough. That simply means get all of the air out of it, commonly known as knocking the dough back for a few seconds as shown. Now form it into a ball. Give the dough ball a swirl around the bowl so it picks up a thin layer of the oil. Cover it again and get it back into its warm spot for a further 45 minutes. Now this time may vary depending on the temperature of your kitchen. Right, while I'm waiting for the second rise I can prepare a baking tray. The dimensions of the tray I'll be using are on screen. 
Now the muffins are not baked on this tray, it's just somewhere to store them while they rise. Traditionally, coarse semolina flour is used to prevent the raw muffins from sticking to the tray, which is what I'll be using. But if you don't have any, ordinary flour will do. OK, I'll put that aside for now. Right, so far so good. And that's the second rise complete. And as you can see, mine's just about more than doubled in size. Now I'll turn it out onto a floured surface. This time don't knock it back, but carefully and gently flatten it out a little. Now get your rolling pin and lightly and gently again roll it to approximately 13 millimetres, that's half an inch thick, and square it off a little. Now using a 7.5 centimetre or 3 inch scone cutter, start cutting out the circles. Get as many as you can at first. Now place them evenly out on the baking tray that you prepared earlier. Form the remaining dough left by the cutter into a ball. Let it relax for a couple of minutes, then roll it out again to a half an inch thick and cut those out as shown. There will be a small bit of waste dough left, but there's nothing you can do about that. Now cover the muffins with a lightweight dry cloth. Once that's done, get them into your warm spot and set your timer, this time for only 30 minutes. And at this point, I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop, along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. OK, almost there. After that 30 minutes is up, your muffins should have risen nicely, just like mine has. Now the way muffins are cooked is in a frying pan, skillet or griddle. Now I'll be using my 12 inch cast iron lodge frying pan. I love this pan as it always heats up evenly across the whole surface. And the way I prepare the pan is to heat it up to 200 Celsius, that's 390 Fahrenheit. Now pour on approximately a teaspoon of cooking oil. Then very carefully wipe it all off using kitchen paper, leaving a very thin coat of oil all over the pan. If you are using an ordinary non-stick frying pan, there's no need for any oil at all. We're not trying to fry these. I'm just making my cast iron frying pan non-stick. Now carefully place three or four muffins in the pan, keeping the heat as low as possible. Give them four to five minutes on each side. And once they're brown like these, they're just about done. You can check by carefully pressing the muffins with your finger. They should be quite firm, indicating that they're done. Now get them out onto a plate and do the rest. And that's it, all done. And that's all there is to cooking these muffins. And the secret is, keep the temperature of your pan low. Now there's lots of ways you can have these muffins. 
I like to freeze mine soon as they've cooled from the pan. That way I can get them out in the morning, defrost them in the microwave, it only takes a couple of moments, and then get them into a toaster and apply lots of butter with a poached egg on top and crispy bacon on the side. One of my personal breakfast favourites, which I'll demonstrate now, is toasted with lots of homemade butter and strawberry jam on. I'll leave links to those two videos in the description. And here we go. And honestly, they are super delicious, really easy to make, and if these don't get a thumbs up from your family, nothing will. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Peter Almond, Paul Coulson, Anita and Alastair Stevens, Selwyn Rhodes, Kate Bartholomew, Mary Schwerd, Jacques Kirkwood, Ralph Kugler, Timothy Sumter, Hugh Liu, Julie Rimmer Hunter, T. Van Deest, Ian Bailey, Timothy Griffin, Jimmy Conrad, Graham Dickinson, and Sandra Oss. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen, and bye for now.